r slash ask reddit by redmond ets who is the scariest person you have ever met got a dui back in 2009 was taken to the plaza country drunk tank guy with tattoos all over his face approaches me i think i'm for sure getting raped nope he wanted to offer me his roll of toilet paper for a pillow he introduced himself as the sack city psycho he told me he would watch over me to make sure nobody messed with me, cause he could tell I did not have much experience in jail. Now looking back on it, I guess for a few hours there, I was his bitch. Super nice guy though, 10 out of 10 would be his bitch again. Once did one of those corporate mock jury panels. The little scientist analytics guy came out halfway through to shoot the breeze and holy hell. I never understood what people meant by having a magnetic personality until them. We were clamoring over this dude. It was completely involuntary. He asked me a question and it was an out of body experience watching myself act like a golden retriever. I was so freaked out that I avoided him like the plague the rest of the panel. Nice dude. Seemed chill but he could have started a cult with a snap of his fingers. Absolutely terrifying. I've heard that Bill Clinton is like that in person. People report that it's like the whole world stops around you when he makes you feel like the most important thing in existence. My partner's brother was a White House reporter during Clinton's time and says similar. Pure charisma. I got arrested for public intoxication in the mid late 90s and was put in a normal cell because the drunk tank was full. About 10 minutes later, I was woken up and hastily moved to an adjoining cell. I visited with the guy in the first cell I was in for the few hours. When I was bailed out, I bumped knuckles with Gary, guy in other cell, and left. I later found out he was Gary Klapus, and he was being held on first degree murder and dismemberment of a body of a college student. I also found out that later in the day, after I left, he beat the next guy who was put in his cell nearly to death. My cousin. He's a high ranked member in a pretty well known 1% motorcycle club. Dude stands maybe 5'7 and average build. No visible tats and super soft spoken. Everything about him says he should be a banker not a biker. I have never seen him even raise his voice once but that dude scares the absolute crap out of me. He gives off strong psycho energy. Quite a pleasant older guy. When I worked at the spy museum, he was a patron founder consultant for the museum. Very kind. Funny, in an old guy kind of way. Really nice to all of us who were working the museum and the events he was at. He always arrived with a police escort. Which didn't really click with me for a while. Then I realized he was Oleg Kalugin, former KGB. I was working an event where he was speaking and this woman burst through the door and was yelling at him in Russian. He responded to her in English so the rest of the audience could understand and he said, Your husband was a traitor he deserved to die, and then he just walked out. The woman was escorted out by security. This was like 15 years ago, but it's seared into my memory. I was at a bar and this guy walks in and immediately it felt like I was on alert. My spine turned to ice when I saw his eyes look at me, they were almost sunken into his face, as if he was peeking out from behind a portrait. He moved like a cat stalking prey. Over time he made his way over to me and made polite conversation, but his words felt disjointed, almost like he was translating them before speaking them. There was nothing aggressive or insulting about anything he was doing. In fact, he was quite polite but everything about this guy was setting off every nerve I had. He was even smiling through most of it, but it felt as if his lips were stapled back. Did an internship at a jail. Met a dude awaiting trial on a triple homicide. Guy just had that vibe around him that just made you feel uncomfortable. Just being in his presence you could feel the air change around you and everyone in that room felt and respected it. Was hanging out and drinking with a friend of mine when he said a guy we knew wanted to come over. I said no because he gives off mass shooter vibes but my friend invited him anyway. We were all hanging out and having a good time and my friend drunkenly mentioned what I had said about the guy. I shot my friend a why the fudge will you say that look, expecting the guy to be offended. Instead, he smiled and asked. How many bodies you think I could get? I once as a medical student was doing a rotation in the state mental prison. We had to basic physical on this guy. 
There was a chair in the middle of the room, bolted to the floor. He had cuffs on his wrists and feet secured to the chair. Nine guards were in the room surrounding us, not more than five feet from the chair in a circle. He was off, just not there and didn't want to cooperate. He looked at me, saw my coat and said. That guy is from the university, I want to talk to him. Still don't know what he had done, but after a few months of the rotation no one else had that degree of security for medical visits. No one else was even close. So I went to a bachelor party for a friend and we had a stripper there, the girl came and everything went smoothly. She came with her security pimp who was this real big black guy with this bad air around him. He was silent, and stared at everyone and just overall very creepy. I asked if he wanted a drink or something to eat since he was there anyway and he just stared at me without saying anything. I found out a little more than a year later that this guy was killing hookers and leaving them in abandoned houses. This was in Gary, so there's a ton of abandoned houses. A former client. Not big enough to be truly scary but someday. He did enough damage as it was. Beat two staff literally half to death. Broke another one's nose for asking him to not pull their hair. So many concussions. Thousands of dollars in damages to both company property and staffs, televisions, windows, doors, gaming systems, windshields, glasses, phones, teeth, bones. Literally every escalation every single day ended up being an attempted murder. We could, on a good day, expect two four of them per shift. Sometimes lasting hours. They got mad at us if we called the police to help us. They didn't want him to look bad in the community. We weren't officially forbidden from personally pressing charges but it was not encouraged. Everyone did everything to make sure he never faced any consequences. For the two stuff he pulverized, he had to draw a picture to say he was sorry, he was almost 14. He finished the picture, looked the staff with him in the eye and said. I'm not sorry. I'm glad I did it. I wish I'd hurt them worse. I wish I'd killed them. It was my job to work with him. When he wasn't in a rage, he had his decent moments. In one calm conversation, we were playing Legos or something, I asked him if he'd like to talk about some ways to avoid hurting people when he gets angry. The kid looks me dead in the eye and said, no. I don't want to stop hurting people. I like hurting people. I asked him why. He shrugged. I just like it. It's fun. I believed him. One of the people I grew up calling an uncle was actually a hitman for the mafia. I loved him to death and never would have imagined it, but everyone who knew him and his reputation was terrified of him. I only learned of what he did after he disappeared. I miss him he was always really good and kind to me and my siblings, but damn learning what he did was terrifying. My uncle was in prison with Kip Kinkle, a teenage boy who murdered his parents, went to school and shot it up, killing a couple kids and wounding a couple dozen others. It was one of the high schools in my hometown. I was only about 7 years old at the time, but I remember it vividly. Our school and every other school in town went into a lockdown for a number of hours. Anyway my uncle was in a gang. He's been shot a couple times, god only knows what else. Years later as an adult, I asked my uncle what it's like to meet Kip Kinkle, and he said. Nah he ain't no killer, I could tell by the look in his eyes that he was just a scared little punk. That comment admittedly made my skin crawl a little. Yep, my uncle is the scariest person I've ever met. That's all folks. Thank you for watching. If you like videos like this one, why not like and subscribe for more? Have a nice evening.